In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Throughout the entire history of the known world, men have conquered other men. For more than a year now, Russia has been invading Ukraine. There's even talk of Russia annexing Belarus. And we have other strong men, of course, throughout the world. And throughout history, we have had to deal with them. We have read throughout history of rulers who have conquered cities. We have read in the history books of emperors who have conquered entire nations. At times, leaders have strived to conquer the whole world. But there remains one territory that has eluded men of power throughout all of history, the unconquered territory is the human heart, and its sole conqueror is Christ the King. Today we celebrate together one of the great feasts of the church calendar, the Feast of Palm Sunday. Today we gather together to celebrate Christ's triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. Today we celebrate Christ as the King who enters our own personal Jerusalem, our hearts. Today's feast day is a momentary feast of joy and celebration because tonight we begin the final leg of our journey towards Pascha. Our mood changes from one of joy this morning to one of solemnity, almost sorrow, this evening as we lead up to the great sacrifice that Christ performed for us on the cross. The Feast of Palm Sunday has been celebrated in our church since the earliest days of Christianity. But the use of palms in connection with religious celebrations goes all the way back to the Old Testament. Oddly enough, palm trees did not grow around the city of Jerusalem. And I can attest to that as I remember uh, when we, I was asked to bless some people by the River Jordan, we couldn't find any palms. So we had to use and make do with what we had. But the people in Jerusalem would buy imported palms for religious celebrations, in particular, the Feast of Tabernacles, celebrated at the temple in Jerusalem. The palm branch was used as a visual tool proclaiming the sovereignty of God as the king of all of the Israelites. With the expectation of the Messiah and the events of Christ's ministry on earth, word traveled quickly across, around Judea that Jesus was the one whom the prophets had spoken about and whom everyone was expecting. Yesterday, Christ performed a miracle by raising Lazarus from the dead the miracle that foreshadowed his glorious resurrection next Sunday. Now everyone is convinced that this is the Messiah, the King who will save the Israelites. And Christ fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah entering Jerusalem on a donkey. All of Israel is preparing to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And Christ enters also as the salvific king who will save Israel from the tyranny of the Roman Empire, but rather from the curse of death 
through his own death and resurrection. You see, they were looking for a salvific king to come in on a great white horse and to wield a huge sword like we see in uh, some of the superhero movies and uh, with a great shield to protect him. And he would come in and take care of those Romans that were occupying them. But no, our Lord came in on a donkey. For Orthodox Christians around the world, we celebrate these events as they happened, not only in the past, but also as they happen today. We celebrate Christ as the King who enters our hearts, as I said, our own personal Jerusalem. I ask you today, is Christ able to enter your heart? Is there room in our hearts for Christ to rule as King? Too often the doors of our hearts are closed and locked. Too often Christ is unable to enter because there is already another king of our heart, and that is ourselves. So how do we solve this problem of trying to let Christ in? How do we instill within ourselves the one thing that is missing? And the thing that is missing is God. The answer for all of this is to surrender. We don't like that word, do we? To surrender. The Greek word is paradidomi, which means to yield upward rather than to our current circumstances. To yield upward. Paradidomi. So in English we say surrender. So surrender to the will of God. Surrender to the one who gave you life. Yes. We are constantly bound and held captive by the temporal things of this life. We are prisoners of our own selves, of this world, of our careers, of our money, of the politicians who rule over us. We are even slaves to our own passions. The only way to find peace, to find true happiness, to experience true love, is to surrender yourself to God, to make Him your King, to live in total communion with Him. And the way in which we turn our hearts from the kingdom of the self into the kingdom of God is through these simple things, constant daily prayer, reflection, meditation, reading and understanding Scripture, and helping those in need. Consider this today. On Palm Sunday in the year 2023, consider doing these things, making them a part of your life. I can tell you that my heart is exploding right now. This beautiful church is full again. Hallelujah. We even have brothers and sisters that couldn't be here with us today who are absent for good cause watching on the live stream. I am speaking 
to everyone who can hear my voice. Let's all make time for God. Let's all make Him our priority. Listen to this sentence and consider what I say. If we don't have time for God, then why on earth should God have any time for us? Think about that. But you know what? Our good and loving God always has time for us. He is constantly knocking at the door to our hearts. And asking if he can please come in. Some of the church fathers address this when they proclaim that God constantly seeks to be with the one that he loves. And he loves each and every one of us. And he would do absolutely anything to be with the people that he loves. So he is knocking. Today our churches throughout the world are filled. Each Orthodox church throughout the world will distribute palm crosses to their faithful at the conclusion of the service. These palm crosses symbolize that Christ is the king of our hearts, that Christ is the only true answer to happiness and meaning in our lives. And if we proclaim Christ as our king, then we must try and make time for him in our lives. We should remember that he is the one with whom we will spend eternity with. I should add a caveat, that is if we follow his commandments and do his will. Our careers, our education, our finances, our homes, all of these things are temporary. Let's all prioritize today and make Christ the King as the primary one in our lives. This will be the only way that we find true peace and happiness in the world we live in today. My heart is full when I see you here. Make God and bring him into your own personal Jerusalem, your hearts. Amen.